Hello, this is the human torso, and uh, we're going to use the human torso to uh, learn about the digestive system. So I removed all of the organs of the digestive system from the abdominal cavity, and we're going to look at these organs separately. Um, the first <coughs> organ we're going to look at is uh, the stomach and uh, notice the shape of the stomach and because of the shape it has two curvatures this is known as the lesser curvature and, uh, and this is known as the greater curvature the stomach is also divided into four uh, regions uh, this is the esophagus, so the area where the esophagus connects to the stomach, uh, that is the cardiac region. Then this elevated area in here that looks like a tongue, that's the fundus. And then the most portion that you see in here of the stomach, that is known as the body of the stomach. And uh, then the narrow area at the end of the stomach in here, this is known as the pylorus. There are also two sphincters associated with the movement of the food in and out of the stomach. One sphincter is near the esophagus and that's the cardiac sphincter. And the other sphincter is near where the stomach connects the small intestine and uh, that is the pyloric uh, sphincter. Uh, this particular model we can open the stomach so we can see the inside of the stomach and there are two things that are visible on this model. One is uh, uh, we can see uh, the pyloric sphincter and the other is we can see that the lining of the stomach uh, is folded and uh, those structures, these folded structures, are known as ruby. So that's the basic structure of uh, the stomach. Next, we're gonna look at what the stomach connects to, and uh, uh, connects to the small intestine. And the small intestines on the mo model are shown in the lighter color. Uh, the first part of the small intestine is in this area here and uh, that is the duodenum. Duodenum will lead to this darker area in here which is the jejunum, and then the jejunum will lead to the lighter area in here which is the ileum. There are about 20 to 22 feet of a small intestine. That includes all three parts, the duodenum, the duodenum, and the ileum. The ileum will connect to the large intestine, and the area where it connects is known as the cecum. At the end of the cecum, if I turn this around, at the end of the cecum, we have the appendix. Then the cecum is connected to the ascending colon. The ascending colon is connected to the transverse colon and the transfer colon will lead to the descending colon and if we follow the descending colon it, uh, it will curve at the lower part and uh, forms the sigmoid colon. The rectum is not shown on uh, on this uh, model. Um, when we compare the small intestine and the large intestine, notice that in the colon we have this layer in here that looks like a strip of tissue. That's actually the longitudinal uh, muscles found in the wall of the colon. And because uh, of the way it's shaped, uh, uh, it will uh, notice that the, the, the colon will look 
like it has pouches, which are known as hostra, and that's a characteristic of the colon when you compare it to uh, the small uh, intestine. One of the accessory organs of the digestive system is also shown in this model, which is the, the pancreas. That's the pancreas. Uh, the pancreas produces uh, two uh, important products. One of the products is the bicarbonate, which uh, will be uh, used to neutralize the acid uh, coming from the stomach. And uh, the other product uh, that comes from the pancreas into the digestive system uh, are a group of enzymes that are used to di digest proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids. Uh, the white uh, structure that you see on the pancreas is the pancreatic duct, and that is the duct that will carry the pancreatic juice um, to uh, the duodenum. So if you follow it, it will lead in there. Um, also, a product that comes from the liver, which is the bile, uh, is connected, and we can see this on the other side of the model in here. Uh, the green line in here is basically the bile duct, and the bile duct brings the bile from the liver to uh, the duodenum. Uh, the bile contains bile salts, and uh, the bile salts are important in the digestion of the lipid. Um, they uh, they are responsible for what is known as emulsification. Emulsification basically means uh, that the lipid droplets will be broken down into smaller droplets and that will make it easy for uh, the enzyme lipase that comes from the pancreas to uh, digest the lipid materials. The next uh, uh, part that we're going to look at is, uh, is the liver. Uh, and uh, one of the things that you notice in the liver is uh, the green portion in here, which is basically the gallbladder. And uh, if we look at it on the other side, we, we see the, the gallbladder in here. Uh, the gallbladder uh, store the bile. The bile is produced by the liver. And it's stored in the gallbladder. And then it will pass from the gallbladder through the bile duct to the duodenum, like we mentioned earlier. So these are some of the parts of the digestive system that uh, we can learn from using the uh, human torso.